What's going on everybody, Cleopas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some beginner tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G 2023 to help you get more used to using it. Now as always, if you do end up wanting to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to change your wallpaper. To do this, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to settings. To do this, swipe down twice from the top, so one, two. The settings icon is right here. From this menu, go to wallpaper, so right here. Then from here, we got a few different options. You can choose from your own photos, stylized, so if you want to customize the theme a bit more, dynamic, which is basically just some sort of animated wallpapers and then curated images, which is basically pre-installed on the phone. So for example, if we go here, hit change wallpaper, then from here choose whichever wallpaper you want. It's gonna give you a preview, so home screen, lock screen. Once you're done, hit the check mark, and then you can choose between home screen, lock screen, or both. And that's pretty much it. Now that was easy enough, but if you're setting up your phone for the first time, there is actually a quicker way to change your wallpaper and access some additional home screen settings. So for this, all you have to do is press and hold your finger on a blank spot on your home screen. So like this, and this menu is gonna show up. From here, you can customize your theme, change your wallpaper, add and remove widgets, and access some additional home screen settings. So especially if, again, you're setting up your phone for the first time, definitely a great shortcut to have. Now I'm going to show you how to use dark mode. First thing you're going to want to do is go to settings. Then from here, go to display. And in this menu, under appearance, dark theme is right here. Toggle it on. And we are now in dark mode. So definitely pretty cool. I know a lot of people prefer it like this, and if you want, you can actually schedule it to turn on automatically. To do this, tap right here, then from here, go to schedule, and as you can see, you can have it turn on from sunset to sunrise, automatically at bedtime, or set a custom time. Now I'm going to show you how to control which apps can send you notifications. So as you get more and more apps, this is definitely something you're probably going to want to do, because although notifications from some apps can be useful, from others not so much, and if you have a bunch of different apps, getting notifications all the time can be a bit overwhelming. So to get to your notifications, go to settings. From here, go to notifications. Then from here, go to app settings. And by default, it's just going to show you the most recent, so this right here is pretty much the most recent notification I've gotten. But if you want to see everything, hit the drop down right here. Then from here, go to all apps. And as you can probably imagine, this is going to show you every app on your phone. So if you want to disable notifications from something, toggle it off like this, and that's pretty much it. Now we're going to take a quick look at the sound menu. Now you can technically use the settings menu to get to this, but the easier way to do it is by hitting either volume key. So I'm going to go like this, from here, hit these dots, then from here, go to settings, and this right here is the main sound menu. So at the top here, we got a few different volumes, media volume, call volume, ring volume, notification volume, alarm volume, pretty self-explanatory. And in case you didn't know, by default, the volume keys will control the media volume, so definitely keep this in mind. Now in this menu, there are a lot of different settings to play around with, and if you're using this phone for the first time, I do recommend looking at everything, but I'm just going to quickly go over what I think are the most important ones. So first off, we got Do Not Disturb. You can technically turn it on from this menu, but an easier way to do it is simply by swiping down from the top, so like this. And Do Not Disturb is right here, so you can toggle it on and off really quickly whenever you want. Back in the sound menu, if you ever want to change your ringtone, that's going to be right here. So we got the default, a couple different presets, and of course to add your own, simply hit add ringtone right here. You can also do the same thing for your notification sounds, so notification right here, alarm sound right below that. In addition to this, we got some vibration settings, so if we go right here, by default, ring vibration, outgoing call vibration, notification, alarm, touch feedback, and media vibration, all of this will be on, but of course you can set it however you want. And then finally we got a few different system sounds, so again back in the main sound menu, at the very bottom, keep in mind that by default, unless you're in mute or vibrate mode, dial pad tones, the screen locking sound, charging sounds and vibration, and power on sounds, all this will be on, and if your phone is on right now, I'm sure you've probably heard, the power on sound is pretty loud, so just keep in mind if you ever want to turn it off, you can from this menu. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change your system navigation. 
Now, as you can see, by default, this phone does have the typical three button navigation you usually find in an Android phone. Lots of phones do have gesture navigation, but with this phone, this is the default. But if you do want to change it, all you have to do is go to settings. From here, go to gestures. And from this gesture menu, go to system navigation. Then from here, again by default, we do have three button navigation. But if we go to gesture navigation, instead of buttons, we have this one line right here. And it does make things look a bit more minimalistic. So if you are going for that kind of simple look, definitely a nice option. Now, in case you've never used this before, let me show you how it works. To go home, swipe up like this. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger partially up. And to go back, swipe from the side. So yeah, pretty simple, but I know gesture navigation is definitely not for everyone. A lot of people do prefer the buttons, but if you haven't already, I definitely recommend giving it a try because at the end of the day, it's really up to personal preference. Now I'm gonna show you how to take a screenshot with the Moto G Stylus 5G 2023. So to take a screenshot with this phone, all you have to do is press the power key and the volume down key at the same time. And keep in mind, you don't actually have to hold the buttons. So all you have to do is press them real quick. So like this. And that's pretty much it. You can share it, edit, delete, whatever you want to do. And after that, unless you delete it of course, the screenshot will be saved right to your photos. Now I'm going to show you how to edit your quick menu. Now in case you don't know what this is, to get to your quick menu, swipe down twice from the top of the screen. So one, two, and this is essentially the quick menu right here. As you can see it has a bunch of different features so pretty convenient, but keep in mind you can edit this. To do this, hit the pencil icon right here. At the top, this is going to show you everything you currently have on the menu, and below this line right here, this is everything you can add. So if you want to get rid of something, press and hold, drag it to the bottom, and if you want to add something, pretty much do the exact opposite. So we're going to add dark theme, so press and hold, drag it up, and there we go. And once you're done, all you have to do is hit back. And now as you can see, dark theme is now in the quick menu. And then if you ever want to reset it to the default, all you have to do is go right back to that one edit screen. So again, hit the pencil icon. Then from here, hit these dots right here. Hit reset. And everything will be back to normal. Now I'm going to show you how to change your screen lock. Now by default, the screen lock is going to be a pin, which is pretty standard on any smartphone. And I also use the fingerprint scanner. But we do have a few different options here. So to get to these, go to settings. From here, go to security or security and privacy, so it's right here. Then from here, go to where it says device lock, so this drop down right here. Then from here, go to screen lock, enter your current pin, and from this menu, as you can see, you can choose between none, swipe, pattern, pin, or password. So a few different options, none and swipe as you can see are no security, the only real difference is that with none, you don't really even get a lock screen. Whereas with swipe, even though it doesn't actually lock, you still kind of get like a swipe up to unlock type screen. Pattern, pretty straightforward. Pin, again, this is basically the standard. And if you want really high security, you can always use a password. In addition to this, keep in mind, this phone does have face unlock and a fingerprint scanner. So to set these up, go back to the main security menu. And then from here, fingerprint and face unlock are right below the main screen lock section. And then finally, the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to change your screen timeout time. To do this, go to settings, then from here, go to display, and from this menu, screen timeout is right here. So as you can see, I have mine set to 30 minutes, but you can also set it as short as 15 seconds. Now, I personally don't recommend keeping it super long because for most people, it's really just going to drain your battery. But if you are consuming a lot of content like reading, for example, and you want to make sure your screen stays on the whole time, you can set a longer screen timeout time, but in addition to this, you can also use a feature called attentive display. So right here, if you turn this on, it's basically gonna use your front facing camera to detect your face. So as long as you're looking at the phone, the screen will stay on. Now, in my experience, it's not 100% reliable, but I feel like for most people, especially if you're just doing something like reading, for example, it does get the job done. So it definitely is a nice alternative. But this concludes my beginner's guide to the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G 2023. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description, where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.